when we, we're trying to prove this, right? We, we're trying to show that this is a subset of H. That's what we're trying to prove. And we're starting with this. We're going that way. So, uh, so let's, uh, for each element belonging here, see if we can prove. So let, let G uh, be some element belonging to this set. And let's try to show that, it's a, that G also belongs to H. And if that's the case, that's the definition of a subset, then this is a subset of that. Okay? So let X belong to this. And then we'll try to show that G, sorry, let little G belong to this. And then we'll try to show that little G therefore also belongs to that. And that's the definition of a subgroup. So hence we'll get that. So let's, let's try that strategy. Okay, so let little G belong to this. X into this H. So uh, that means G, little g, any any member of your group G, has to be of this form. Okay, X inverse H X. That, that's for you know, there's some element of H has, has to be of that form. All right. Uh, now again, the, the trick. Uh, put an E on the end here. Doesn't change the value. Okay. Uh, but uh, it means that uh, this element here must belong to X inverse uh, subgroup H uh, and times uh, X. Now E is also a member of H, so this little g must be belong to this product of, uh, well, in fact, cosets. Right? Right? If G equals that, then G must be belong to, to, to that uh, product of cosets. Now, um, now this we've got from previous theorem here. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Now we're going from P to Q. No, we've got it. Yeah, we've got it's the left hand side. We're, we're now we're now proving. If P then Q, so we've got we've got that. All right, so we can now uh, you know, apply this to here. So uh, it's actually A and actually B. So uh, the the result is A B H, right? But X is oh, sorry, A is X inverse and B is X. So A B is X inverse X. Well, that's just E, right? And E H is just H. So that means G belongs to G belongs to H big H right so G, you know, G belongs to H so if G belongs to X inverse HX then G belongs to H therefore this is a subset of that right so X inverse HX is a subset of H which is that which is what we had to prove so we've just proved Q right so uh, we have we have theorem 58 now proved. Now interestingly, um, if if this is true, then I, I don't have enough board to, to prove it. But the, the next theorem follows on um, from uh, 58, so theorem 59. If this is true, you can show fairly quickly that it's, uh, this is not just a subset of that, they're actually equal, right? These, these two are actually equal, they're, they're the same uh, subgroup, right? So uh, that will be for next session, because you know, run out of board, right? Now, um, so if that's true, you, you actually get the equality here, not, not, not just this, that this is a, a subset of that, you actually get the equality. So uh, proving that, that, that you get this equality, is uh, theorem 59. But now how to prove it? Well, um, you know, in general, how do you prove that two, two sets, um, in this case two subgroups, uh, are equal? Uh, again, well, think of them as uh, sets. So again, uh, you, know, you prove one is a subset of the other and the other is a subset of the one. But we already have, you know, if that's true, we're trying to prove that. So, uh, you know, we, we've given that, we've got, got a, now, now, look, this, this is a one-way arrow. It's not an, it is not an if-and-only-if statement, right? It's just one way. It's from left to right. 
So um, we only have to go in one direction. So you assume this is true, and then you have to prove that. So uh, now to prove this, you you uh, you need the the two statements. One's a subset of the other, and the other's a subset of the one. So to to get this, given this, you just uh, you just need the other one. So in other words, uh, H H is a subset of this. So um, if if you can prove if you can prove that H is a subset of that, uh, if you if you have that result, and you're given this one, so you put the two together and you get that. So in other words, proving this boils down to just proving this, right? Because that's given, and if you can prove that, then you can combine these two and get that. So uh, ne next session uh, to prove 59, I'll just I'll just do this. Now uh, I could I could give you the punchline now or next session. Uh, once, well, I'll give it to you now, give you a taste, right? Um, 59 gives you this, right? Theorem 59 gives you this. So, uh, a subgroup, H, if it, if it has this property, if, if this is true for any element X of your group G, big G, right? If that's true for any X, that H, that subgroup, has a special name. It's called a normal, N-O-R-M-A-L, a normal subgroup. Now don't be fooled, it's not normal in the sense of ordinary, garden variety, not special, usual. It, does, it doesn't have any of those connotations. It's a strictly technical label. Right? Uh, if you hear the term normal subgroup, H, you know that this is true immediately, right? So, so for any element x of your g, you know that x inverse h, x equals h. And uh, this, this, uh, <laughs> what, what does that mean actually? Well, this is sort of a shorthand. Uh, for h, you could put, it's just a set, right? So, um, so imagine wiggly brackets and then uh, H is like H1 comma little H1 comma little H2 comma little H3 comma dot dot dot. So that's that's the set of elements belonging to your subgroup H. And so you multiply on the left. You mul multiply each element in that set on the left by x inverse and on the right by x. And the set that you get resulting here will be the same set as here. Okay. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll stop there for next session and actually prove theorem 59 by, by proving this. Okay, so now we know what a normal subgroup is. A normal subgroup satisfies this condition. And we will go on to show that uh, with normal subgroups, uh, you are able to prove that... Uh, Using this idea of you know, cosets of a subgroup um, and binary operation between cosets, you actually you actually get a group. We can we can go through the four properties of a group and show that these cosets are elements of a group. And the condition that uh, that the, the cosets do form a group is is uh, the condition on H. Um, in, uh, in fact, the third, the third example, you know, we did a group table, and uh, the, the subgroup H that we chose was E. Uh, uh, this, was, this was in the context of the group uh, D3, uh, the symmetry operations of an equilateral triangle. Now, the, the H that we chose, the subgroup, uh, was the set E and B. Now, uh, that's that set, that uh, subgroup E and B, is not normal. And in fact, uh, proving that is one of the exercises. So we'll probably we'll probably prove that in um, the problem solving session. So so the set E and B is not a normal 
subgroup. And that was the reason why uh, when we did the group table, it, it failed. It's just a mess. Okay? So a condition to, uh, to have a quotient group, a factor group, is that your subgroup H, you know, from which you generate all the cosets, you know, A, H, B, H, uh, A squared H, blah, 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 you know, all the cosets, uh, you know, depending, depend on your H, but that H uh, has to be normal, it has to be a normal subgroup, so uh, really important, okay, and once, once you know that your subgroup is normal, then you know you can find a factor group, uh, a quotient group, same thing, okay. So really, really important concept. So you will hear this term, normal subgroup, normal subgroup. H is a normal subgroup. You'll hear it again and again and again. It's, it's, uh, it's like one of the pinnacles of finite group theory, this concept of a normal subgroup. Uh, because using it, um, being a, you know, by having uh, a subgroup that is normal, it means that you can then find uh, quotient groups and fact, you know, quotient groups, factor groups, and that means that you can start analyzing the structure of groups. Uh, you, you can uh, you know, break them down into smaller groups, and then you can break those down into smaller groups yet again. So you have a whole whole hierarchy, if you like, of uh, of structure within within a group, and it all depends. It all hangs on the notion of a normal normal subgroup. So it's absolutely critical. So. Uh, until till next session.